start to the uh, third lecture of the gene therapy. In gene therapy, in previous lectures, I told you about the consequences of the gene therapy and what is gene therapy and principle of the gene therapy and things. As well as we discovered the, uh, we explain the two viruses of the retroviral vectors as well as the lentivirus vectors. Today I will uh, explain the, the few more viruses which are response, which are used as a vectors for the gene therapy as well as we will talk about the non-viral waste vectors also. This is the content uh, this is the today's content of this lectures so we will start to the uh, in continuation with the adenoviral vectors as my dear student the adenoviral vectors these adenoviruses are uh, basically these adenoviruses are elicits the respiratory tract infections basically these adenoviruses are causing the uh, respiratory infections in the humans because they can infect both the dividing as well as the non-dividing cells. They have the ability. And these viruses are the double-stranded DNA viruses. These are the double-stranded DNA viruses. And these viruses, they cannot integrate to their DNA into the host cells. And so therefore they can remain as a episome in the nucleus. They can remain as a episomes in the nucleus whenever they are doing the infections. As a resultant, what will be happening when they are exist as episomes, then we need a constant supply of the gene product. Then we need a constant supply of the gene product. And for that constant supply, we we want to maintain the permanently the supply of the repeated doses of the gene we need the repeated doses of the gene because they cannot integrate to the genome of the host 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 genomes that's why for effective gene therapy we need a constant supply of the gene gene and i think that it is a disadvantage also because if you are providing the repeated doses to the host so it will become the immunogenic it will become the immunogenic and now these viruses will become immunogenic and they elicit to the immune response but uh, the advantage of these viruses is that they can accommodate a large size of the genome up to 30 kilobase pair this is very important they can uh, deliver the approximately 30 kilobase pair gene product gene and and that's why uh, these vectors these these viruses these adenoviruses uh, who are who are used to uh, viral vectors for the gene therapy the another set is adeno associated viruses the adeno associated viruses are they are small viruses they are small viruses and these viruses are depends on the adenoviruses for their replication process and these adeno associated viruses can integrate to their dna can integrate to their dna to the host genome these are the, they are also the dna viruses and these adeno associated viruses integrate in the human genomes specifically in the chromosome number 19 this is important and when they are integrated with a specific locus of chromosome number 19 by that process, they cannot disrupt the other human genes. And their integration is both mitotic as well as non-mitotic cells also. So therefore, these adenovirus genomes can be replaced as a therapeutic genes also and they accommodate up to 5 kilobase pair gene. Next is the herpes simplex. These are also a double-stranded virus. And these, after infection, these herpes simplex 
viruses can integrate to their host genomes. But their use is very limited because they are going, causing the toxicity. Due to their that nature, their use is very less. Then we will come to the, some another, the non-viral waste vectors because these viral vectors are causing the pathogenicity and other things. And the another hand, so the non-viral vectors, here you will see is the naked DNA transfection and cationic lipid polymers. In non-viral vectors, because you need, you know very well about that, the, the in case of the safety point, these viral vectors are not safe. Not safe, this is the major problems. But even after the pseudotyping, these viral vectors are used for the gene therapy process. But the concern is always regarding to their pathogenicity. And sometimes they gain to their replication process, such as in case of the, you will see in case of the adenoviral vectors and other things. So these, now the, uh, so therefore the better alternative for the gene therapy, the other factors are that are the non-viral factors. In case of the first one is the naked DNA transfection. For more study, you should go to this module because I have taken all the parts from to this module and I am explaining to all these things for your educational purpose also from to this module. So you can go to this module also here. That is the gene therapy and soul in the East PG part sala by Professor Vivadavan and so on. So uh, here you will see that uh, the gene of interest, you can directly deliver to the gene of interest to the cell by two types, either in vivo method or in in ex vivo delivery. In, in vivo method or in, in vivo delivery, in vivo or in ex vivo methods. In, in what will be happening in this case one, you can, uh, in vivo methods, you can directly inject to the DNA to the patient by intramuscular junction, by intramuscular in, uh, muscular injection, by an intramuscular injection, you can directly inject to the DNA to the patient. Mode of injection will be either intravascular also. But in case of the X vivo method, what you will do at first you should isolate the tissues and cells from the patient. Then in laboratory conditions, you can micro inject it to that DNA into that particular cells or the tissue culture mediums. Then after that process, you can if all the efficacy and safety measures you have taken, then you can ultimately to you can then inject to that desired gene of interest to the patients. This is the safest method for delivery, but it is highly insufficient. The second is the cationic lipid and polymers, as you are well known about that DNA is a negatively charged molecule. DNA is a negatively charged molecule. And this DNA molecule is encapsulated in a delivery vehicle, in a delivery vehicle which has the cationic lipid and polymers, which has the cationic lipid and polymers. The positive head of that lipid binds to the phosphate pi, phosphate group of the DNA molecule, because the positive head, positive head bind to the phosphate group, phosphate is negatively charged of the DNA molecule. As a resultant, it will form a lipid DNA complex. Now what it forms? It forms a lipid DNA complex. And inside to that vesicle, DNA molecule is present. Inside to that vesicle, DNA molecule is present. Inside to that vesicle, DNA molecule is present. Inside to this vesicle, DNA molecule is present. And this vesicle is lipid bilayer molecules. So what will be happening? The DNAs and other enzymes which digest to that DNA will not attack to this vesicle. This is hydrophobic in nature. 
so now what will be happening that uh, then this lipid molecules now this lipid molecules by non specific endocytosis process by non specific endocytosis process this acycle will enters to the cell will enters to the will enters to the cell then this vesicle now released to the dna contents in the cell now this dna molecule is transported to the then again to the nucleus now this dna molecule is transported to the nucleus because in nucleus the, the host genome is present and there are many other factors also there are many other factors this is a uh, there which uh, regulate to that process number one for formation is the lipid dna complex second is efficiency of that endocytosis process this and third is the transport of this dna molecule to the nucleus so these are the barriers these are the barriers so whenever these dna molecules will overcome to these barriers then it will reach to the to its target site that is the nucleus now what will be happening that if you will see that so the the formation of that lipid depends upon the cationic lipid and the polymers and now the question is if the dna is here how this dna will goes to this nucleus so there is a some nls that is a nuclear localizational signal this nuclear this nuclear localizational signals this nls molecules if you know about the important proteins and exporting proteins the important proteins will bind to the nls alpha important then it will import to this nucleus molecule here also in the nucleus so this nls molecules and and by that process they will um, improve the efficiency this nls binding of this nls molecule will improve the uh, the efficiency of this nuclear transport i think that my dear students today i will uh, explain in this lecture uh, some viruses that are the uh, some viruses that the adenoviral factors uh, up to 30 kilo base pair and they can uh, transport through the dna and the adeno associated adeno associated viral vectors they can transport it up to 5 kilo base pairs and the herpes simplex viral vectors also they has limited use due to toxicity then uh, i explain the some naked dna transfection how the uh, dna is injected in the patients either in vivo in 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 vivo methods in vivo methods or ex vivo methods in in vivo method you can directly inject to the dna in either intravascular or intramuscular junctions to the patient and in vivo methods you can culture and after the culture product you can uh, inject to that thing the another is the cationic lipid polymer complex inside to the vesicle dna is in, encapsulated inside the vesicle then this vesicle so uh, the non specific endocytosis process fuse to the specific cells and then they release to the dna molecule the dna molecule is bind with the nuclear localizational signal the alpha important proteins will transport to that dna molecules to the nucleus so this is the uh, this is today's lectures if you have any questions regarding to this one so you can post in the discussion forums discussion forums and in the next lectures i will tell you about the monogenic disorders and polygenic disorders uh, regarding to this one thank you very much